welcome to Oh The Horror. I'm Fedora, and hey, if the Nightmare Remake didn't do it for you, then hold on to your hockey masks, because one year earlier, Platinum Dunes gave us this massive pile of mad to sink our teeth into. Ooh, the extended cut. Are we actually going to see Lois meeting Jimmy Voorhees in this version? Because that's truly what was missing from the cinematic release. Well, I'm ready for some true Australian-level R-rated action in the 2009 remake of... Friday the 13th. Right away, I'm seeing some promising credentials here. The same director as the remake of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and the same two writers from Freddy vs. Jason. And it's played over a redoing of the finale of the original movie, where Pamela Voorhees gets beheaded by the sole survivor of her rampage on Crystal Lake. You should have been watching him! <laughs> Every minute! Yeah, she's got a point. Where was Special Effects Supervisor Scott Stoddard when Jason drowned? This end beginning, uh, ends, with the young Jason finding his mother's head, which speaks and sends him on his quest to kill anyone who dares enter Crystal Lake. Or at least anyone who dares eat a banana near it. Fucking Jason hates bananas. We then cut to the present day where a group of horny teenagers are hiking through the woods looking for weed, because the Friday franchise is synonymous for its rich and developed characters. And they spend the night talking about the Crystal Lake murders. This girl, she cut that lady's head off with a machete. Her son, Jason, he came back. He was actually there. He watched his mom being beheaded. Well, looks like somebody watched the opening credits. Take that, Cindy from Terror Tunes. <laughs> Seriously, guys, how did he know any of that? After an intellectual discussion on theoretical physics, who should appear but the Phantom Killer from the town that dreaded sundown? That's a weird cameo. One thing people seem to go on about this movie is Jason's new killing style. It's a bit more like a hunter or a survivalist, using bait and laying traps. And you can find out more about it when he guest stars on the next episode of Bushcraft. Meanwhile, this girl, Whitney, and her boyfriend are exploring the nearby camp, where it turns out that she bears a striking resemblance to a young Mrs. Voorhees. Not that we need to establish that plot point too heavily, since we know Jason can apparently be fooled by somebody just wearing a sweater. Speaking of which, Jason attacks the two next, and after her boyfriend is killed, Whitney runs back to the camp where Drop Dead Fred TV Edition finally gets killed as well, and she's left at Voorhees' mercy. Oh, brutal! He cut the title card out of her head! By the way, over 20 minutes in and now they finally drop the title? You know, just in case you mistook this for a strangely graphic episode of The O.C.? Speaking of outdated TV show references, we then meet our hero for this movie, Clay, played by Supernatural's Jared Padalec... D Pal... Padal... Palad Sam. And I'm guessing the reason he's here by himself this time is because his brother is, uh, still having some problems. Well, actually, he is a brother in this movie, but instead to Whitney, who he's been desperately searching for for the last month. Unfortunately for him, he instantly gets on the bad side of a travelling Travis Van Winkle who's made a career for himself playing people with the douchebaggiest names ever. He and his horny teenage entourage are here to replace the last one, only this one's better because it's more racially diverse. Gotta keep Tumblr happy. Wait, that's the same guy who died in the video in the Nightmare remake. This is your fault, YouTube. The system is so broken, even corpses have to work overtime to make decent ad revenue. And while these guys are staying at the Hilton Log Cabin, Clay has to deal with Crystal Lake's locals, who aren't very happy with him being here, and insist that his sister is not in their town. Of course, others have more to say on the matter. Outsiders come, they don't know where to walk. We just won't be left alone. And so does he. So does who? Ryan Johnson, he's hiding in here from all the angry Star Wars fans. But at least she's a bit more normal than the next person Clay pays a visit to. Hey! <laughs> Jesus. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Fucking lucky there, Stretch. Came about that close to hitting the start button on a whoop-ass machine, boy. Oh, the daddy had a little lick. Remember when he took my virginity? I'm gonna fucking pound you so hard. Well, it's nice to finally see what Luke from Confused Reviews looks like in real life. 
After Jason reappears and thankfully gets rid of this character, snagging that infamous mask from the Bloody Murder franchise while he's at it, Clay then arrives at the teen's holiday cabin so he can get schnoozy with Travis's girlfriend, Killer Frost, here. And I know this guy is supposed to be some unlikable turd so we can root for these two getting together, but again, seeing how another horror movie featuring a supernatural brother turned out, that's just gonna make me think Clay's a killer who sees an illusion of a killer who sees an illusion of a killer. Doctor, I really think you need to talk to my invisible friend. He's having mother issues again. Woo, thank God I bought the extended cut. Heaven forbid I miss the all-important beer pong scene. I'm guessing Jason must have recognized Danielle Panabaker due to his next kill. By the way, for everyone watching, getting smacked in the face by a speedboat going about 60 k's an hour is more of an inconvenience. In fact, it doesn't even leave a mark. After having teamed up and spent the last couple of hours searching the camp for clues on his sister's whereabouts, Clay and Jenna are forced to hide when Jason suddenly shows up carrying a corpse. But luckily they manage to escape, yet set off an alarm in Jason's bat cave, where it's revealed that Whitney is in fact alive, having been spared by Jason due to her earlier established likeness to his mother. Truth is though, Jason just has a lot of backed up dishes and laundry and he can't be asked doing it himself. What is this place anyway? Did Jason dig out and lay the floors and walls for this maze of tunnels himself? Or did somebody decide the forests of Crystal Lake really needed a sewer for whatever reason? Whitney manages to pick the locks to her restraints, because movie. And while she's running around trying to escape, let's take a moment to listen to some of the dialogue, because hey, Freddy vs. Jason riders. Your tits are stupendous. You got perfect nipple placement, baby. Is it when? in a fucking titty contest. Meh, that line was okay. But you, sir, are no John Barrowman. What do you say I take you home and eat your pussy? Jason finally makes his presence known to all the teens with a couple of death scenes Tim Taylor would certainly be proud of. By the way, it took you a while to notice that axe in your spine, didn't it, mate? And after teleporting onto the roof, he then amazingly quietly makes his way inside the house. You know, just once, I want to see somebody walk into the room just as one of these giant killers is halfway through coming in. You know, just for laughs. Alright, time for the holster to drain his 12 inch python. Uh, uh, uh. Can you at least give me a hand? Not even the timely arrival of Officer Desperate Housewives is enough to save them. So everyone just bails into the woods, which ends up in a brutal death for Van Winkle. Take it like a man, dude. Andy from part 3 got sliced in half too, only from the nuts up. Also, nice of Jason to give Papa Sawyer here something to eat on the way home. Clay and Jenna, in their bid to escape, attempt to hide in the one place they know Jason will never go. The cabin where they first saw him dumping bodies. The actual reason they're here is because the movie needed to give them an excuse to find Whitney. Oh, yeah, she got recaptured a while ago, making her whole escape scene a complete waste of our time. So the three flee into the tunnels with a pissed off Jason close behind. Jenna gets killed along the way, which ends Clay's hopes of getting into her house of wax. And the tunnel eventually leads the siblings to an exit inside a random upturned bus. Okay. After that, they go to hide in the shed of Honey Boo Boo's dad from earlier, because for some reason, these people just can't run without stopping off somewhere to give Jason time to catch up. And that is, of course, exactly what happens. Jason slaps Clay around for a while before trying to shove his head into a wood chipper. And thank God this movie sticks to the Scarecrow Slayer method of establishing your wood chipper before showing it in your finale. No sense in putting any kinks in this movie's bulletproof plot right at the end. Luckily, Whitney distracts Jason long enough for them to get a chain around his neck and toss it into the chipper. Well, we don't get to see him get blended. He just kind of gets strangled and stabbed. Lame. So after taking the time to untangle Jason and drag him all the way to the lake to bury him at sea for some reason, this movie comes to an end and you know the drill. Damn it, Marcus Nisbell, you had your chance of making a big, ugly, headless CG Betsy Palmer grab her, and you blew it. And that was the Friday the 13th remake. 
The Friday franchise has never exactly been plot-driven. So apart from some more noticeable things like the even less likeable than usual characters with their horrible dialogue, the alterations to Jason, and the obvious modern horror touches like the grunginess and the bullshit shaky can, this could have just been marketed as another sequel and I don't think too many people would have noticed. It did have some satisfying death scenes, but so did a lot of the other movies, so that's not saying a whole lot. A pretty pointless remake overall. And that's all for me for tonight, so I'm Fedora, this is Oh the Horror, save a screen for me, and we'll see you next time. Let's gather around the campfire and sing our campfire song. R-C-A-M-P-F-I-R-E-S-O-N-G song And if you don't think that we can sing it faster then you're wrong But it'll help if you just sing along